Eddie, what do you put that turnaround down to this week? Oh, we just had extra week of training, mate. You know, we're a young, inexperienced team. I think we've given out five new caps in the last two weeks. We had three out there today. Um, it's just about we've got we've got players from 13 different clubs, um, and we need training time together. And uh, we got more on the same page this week, and next week we'll be on the same page even more. Yeah, uh, well, we played the one way we wanted to play. Uh, got the rub of the green with the referee, um, and we're able to exert pressure on Australia. There's been a lot of talk about Ellis again setting the tone, and he did that with that initial carry. I think Mike Warren said he doesn't want to tackle him too often again. I mean, did that did that really sort of make a statement at the start? Well, I think I don't think he was the only one. You know, I think there was a few others, but certainly Genge. Uh, uh, was possibly a little bit annoyed what Tupu said. Um, and he wanted to make a mark on the game. And he can ask you about Billy Vinatola. Oh, you got a different question this week. Yeah. Hey, how good's this? How good's this? <laughs> so you don't want to know how the fans are this week? No? No, you don't want to know about the fans this week. <laughs> let's let's go to Billy. Uh, yeah, no, um, he's getting fitter. Yeah, he just gets fitter every week. He's still got a while to go, but he's probably up to about 95%. Um, so we're pleased with his progress. Have you seen him carry the ball like that for a while? Uh, well, you know, we picked him on the back of his improving club form, and he's 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 got better each week. And with us, he's he's getting, as I said, he's getting fitter. Uh, his level of commitment to be the best player he can be is improving all the time. And he had a good look in his eyes before the game today, and uh, yeah, he's only going to get better. Was there a particular? Richard Cochran was here on Friday talking about the sort of gladiatorial challenge of the forwards. That opening salvo seemed to be them really fired up. Was that particular challenge this week to for the pack? Well, I think you know Suncorp brings that out because it's a intense, close environment. Um, yeah, and it's a modern version of, of Ballymore uh, for rugby and for rugby league it's a mo modern version of Lang Park. And uh, I think, I don't know what it is, it might, it might be the, the scent from the brewery that, that uh, encourages people to, to get stuck into each other. But I think that's traditionally how a Suncorp game goes. Um, and the crowd was fantastic tonight. I know they're unhappy, all our fans are unhappy. They're all out there saying that was rubbish. We don't like the selection. They're all saying that, mate. So make sure you write it. Eddie, can okay. You give us an idea on uh, the situation with Underhill and, and Marrow too. Uh, Marrow's uh, won't be available next week at this stage. Underhill was still assessing. Was, was Marrow, Marrow seemed to be knocked out? Was he? Did he did yeah. They both sort of fail HIA or what? No, no. The medical situation on Marrow is that he's out for next week. Um, but Underhill, we're still assessing through all the protocols. Eddie, were you more satisfied with the opening half an hour of the dominant from the sort of last quarter when you sort of had to show a bit more grit? I was more pleased with the last 15 minutes, mate. The way we fought uh, for a young team again. You know, under that pressure at Suncorp, you're playing against a team that's really comfortable at that ground. Yeah, the referee's starting to even the count up, um, and it's it's a difficult situation. And they they stuck together. Yeah, I think we had three new caps out there at the end of the game, um, and to play with that level of maturity and that level of toughness is a really good sign for the team in the future. And just on one of the new caps, JBP, how have you rated points? Uh, no, very very handy, mate. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, we've selected him because we think he can be a really good test half. Um, he's got a good pass. He's got a scent for a gap. Um, he's not exceptionally quick, but he's got a good scent for the gap, and he's got a, a very consistent kicking game. And I thought the 80 minutes we got out of him, and, and then I thought Danny was outstanding at the end. You know, again, calmness, picked the right option. He's really added to the squad, Danny. So we're really pleased with his contribution. Uh, well, I can't talk for the players, mate. Um, you know, this is a, a very young squad that's developing. 
and, and they need time. And the longer they have together, the better they're going to be. And, and tonight's experience will be you know, one of those great lessons you have. Um, and, and those sort of lessons, every time you have one of those lessons, you get a bit smarter. You, know, you can do your nine times table now instead of your six times table, and you just keep going up. Uh, no, I like it. I think it's fantastic. Uh, I love my mother ringing me up in the morning saying, are you getting sacked? Are you going to get sacked? Are you going to get sacked? When are they going to sack you? When do you have to move? Are you going to come back to Australia? Come back and live in Randwick? So I love that, you know, my poor mother. Uh, but, you know, I don't mind it because I made the choice to take the job, you know, and, and that's always going to happen. Because there's a factuation, a fat Fatuation with sacking coaches now, isn't it? Like it's. Yeah, as I said, you know, it's neither here nor there with to me. Um, but I love that game at Suncor. I love coaching at Suncor. Like that is that's a good experience. Yeah, you know, because you got forty-eight thousand people, all full of drink, um, and 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 all they want to see is their team win. And when you turn them away, it's a great experience, a great feeling. I was coming out from the cages box, you know, they all got their scarves on. When did Australians start wearing scarves? New age, isn't it? Now they've all got their scarves on and they're not, they're not so smart now. Oh, we, you know, before the game, they're coming up and saying, oh, you're going to get belted tonight. And they're a little bit more quiet. So that's good. I'll enjoy that. I hate to raise the issue of fans again. Well, I think the game's gone out of control. I think the game's out of control. Um, yeah, we saw the New Zealand Island test. You know, at one stage, the commentators couldn't count how many players were on the field. Seriously, and they had three backs packing a scrum. Like we've got, we've got it. We've we've gone the full hog, um, where everything's a yellow card, everything's a red card. And there needs to be some common sense come back into the game. Because if, if you're following a team or you're supporting a team or you're watching a game of rugby and, it, and the numbers are changing all the time, you know, we're supposed to have a 15... If we want to play 14 a side, let's just... Like, I asked the referee today how many ye yellow, yellow and red cards he had in his pocket. So I picked up his pocket and had a look how many he had. He had plenty. Um, but he didn't use so many of them today. But he used enough of them. Yeah, I think we've gone gone too far. Been a couple of pushes for the twenty minute red, would you support that? Uh, uh, well I think that's that's more a commonsensical approach, particularly for for when you've got like the, the prop this afternoon, the all black prop, he got he got injured. He got more injured than the ball carrier. There was nothing intentional about him. It was a complete accident. Like he's hundred and thirty five Ks. Yeah, if he had a big breakfast he's probably hundred and forty Ks. And he, and he got beaten by a change of direction and his head hit their head. He goes off injured, he's got a massive cut and the other bloke gets up. Now, to, to lose a player for that sort of incident, I don't think's in the spirit of the game. Yeah, what would it mean to this young group to go and win the series now? Would that be particularly satisfying to silence them? Well, all we're worried about, mate, is preparing well on Monday. You know, if we prepare well on Monday, then prepare well on Tuesday, uh, then we'll worry about whatever happens after that. Eddie, on the, on the cards, specifically those deliberate knockdowns, what do you think of that? You didn't really address that. Uh, well, I don't... Uh, sometimes they're not deliberate knockdowns. Like, I would say both of those, they went for intercepts. Like, Marcus definitely did. And the winger, what was the winger's name? Parisi. Parisi definitely went for intercepts. And, and we've got it, you know, they say you have to have your hand point. I don't know what it is. But it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Whenever you're reaching for a ball, your hand's open. Yeah, if you're going like that and knocking the ball down, then that's a deliberate knock-on, and that should be penalised. But that's not the actions we saw today. Did you want people to go for those? Is that right? Well, they, they can make the choice to go for it, and then if they knock it on, it's a knock-on. But it's not a deliberate knockdown. Oh, uh, well, I think every game he's just getting a little bit better, mate. You know, he's literally, you know, out of his nappies now. Uh, 
and he's got a long way to go uh, and he's going to be a better player each week um, and we're really pleased with how he's developing with Owen you know that combination um, again in its infancy but developing nicely that gives us a few different options in attack um, particularly when we don't have massive backs you know we've got a small back line um, so yeah no he's progressing nicely mate Eddie, Eddie, last couple was, thanks Eddie was Spitting off the game last week, last weekend. What's, what's he been like this week? Uh, what's he been Owen's Owen, mate. Never changes. Angry, hates the world. Uh, best competitor I've ever coached. Best competitor I've ever coached. That includes George Gregan. Like, he's the best competitor. Just l fights hard, loves the battle, uh, drives standards. He's an incredible player, mate. Incredible. Australia's got a fair few injuries. Do you sense that they're vulnerable now? Uh, well, all we're worried about now is, is preparing for... We just worry about ourselves, mate. I don't, even, I don't read the papers. Because they never say anything, mate. Do you report injuries? You do. I'll get my mum to have a look. <laughs> all right, I'm going to ring her up now and say, Mum, can you look at the injuries for me? And if they've got a lot of injuries, I'll give you a call, mate, and tell you, tell you that I'm, I'm worried about them. Uh, he had a, I thought for a debut game, he was outstanding, mate. Worked hard, you know, he's that, he's that no-nonsense, bustling type Sydney Uni centre, you know, they run hard, chase kicks, run hard, chase kicks, run hard, chase kicks, run hard, chase kicks. That's all Sydney Uni ever does. And he's, he's out of that school. And he does that really well. And he's a good lad, like, you know, he's the only one with a stronger Australian accent than Neil Craig, so... He, you know, they're trying to they're trying to get him to develop an English accent, but he's not having much luck at the moment. Great stuff. Right, we'll end there. Um, we'll, um, if newspaper writers want to come to the front, we'll do a quick briefing. So I know the uh, Wallabies players and some VAR players want to come in.